Hey what's up guys welcome to Lara Tips as i have said in my previous video that we will be building a blog and we will be using laravel jetstreamer and inertia js on the back end and on the front end we will be using tailwind css and vue 3 today in this video we will be setting up both the front end and back end so first of all we will set up the front end and then back end so let's start so in this project we will be using vue 3 with router and ESLint. We will not use Vuex because by using Vue 3, we can make some properties available globally or locally, which will be very easy. So we don't need Vuex for this simple project. Okay, it's installed. Now let's cd into the blog directory and let us run yarn serve. Now if I click on this link, so the it is installed now let us open this in vs code okay now le let us add this into the git okay now let me install some packages that we need so we need tailwind css and axios for tailwind css is for designing purpose and and we need axios to interact with our api using the ajax request okay now they are installed now we have to initialize the tailwind css so we have to run this command okay when we run this command this tailwind.config.js file is created and it will create all these things so let me not change anything here we'll be changing when we'll be working on our design so after that what we need to do is we need to create one file postcss.config. JS and here we can do module dot exports and we can say plugins since tailwind is a post CSS plugin so we can do it like this require tailwind CSS and this should be an array not object and also require the auto prefixer so it will add the vendor prefixes to our CSS file. So it is automatically added when we install the view 3 through the view CLI. So we don't need to install it via YAN or NPM. So now we have done this. Let us create a CSS file inside this SRC assets and logo.png. Here we'll get main.css. And here we need to add some code to generate classes using the Tailwind CSS. We can say you can find all these in the Tailwind CSS documentation. Tailwind base. And Tailwind. So when we add these, all the classes will be generated when we run our command. So after this, let us go to our main.js here and let us add that CSS there here import ss slash main.css so this is imported okay now let us go to this our where we have solved our project here and let us cancel it and let us again run it and solve now if we go to the browser then you can see here the design has been changed Okay, now let us go to the app.view and let us clear some things here. So we don't need this. We only need here div and let's say navbar like this. And let us keep this like this. Let's say nav and let's say here footer like this. And we don't need any of these styles. Now, if we go to this components, there is hello world. Let us remove this. And in the router, if we go in the index.js, we have this home route and this about us route. So let us just comment it for now. We'll be using this for other routes. And then if we go inside the view, we have this about and home. So we don't need about for now. Let us just remove this. And if you go inside the home, so there is this components so let us just say home here and let us all remove this so at will be this src 
now if i do it like this so everything is removed yeah now if i go here in the browser you can see here we are only getting navbar home and footer and if we go in this public index.php so let us give some background color bg k 200 and now you can see how the background has been changed so we have successfully installed the tailwind css okay now let's leave this the front end installation here and tomorrow we'll be continuing with this okay now let us set up the back end so for that let me go to the sites directory here and i will say laravel new blog dash dash jet and if I do it like this, JetStream will be installed automatically. So if you haven't installed this Laravel as a global dependency, then you can go ahead in the Laravel documentation and go under the installation section and you can just look at this installing Laravel guide and you can install it. It is very easy to install. And now if we do it like this and hit enter, now we, we want backend to be powered by inertia. So we will hit one here and enter. Will, will your application use teams no we don't use teams for now okay now after this it will create full project for us the jet stream is installed now let's us go inside this blog directory here and let us open this in the ps code so let me close the previous one okay now i have currently installed this in this my sites directory so whenever i install a laravel project then i can access this using the folder name and dot test so currently the folder name is blog and if i go here and if i say blog dot test my laravel project will run so as you can see here that it is uh, access denied for the user root for localhost so let us set up that first and if i go in the dot env file and we'll say blog root and password one and let us create that table okay i have created the database and let me migrate So all the migration that comes with JetStream are migrated now. Okay, now let's see in the browser. So you can see here the dashboard is now open. So you can see here login and register here. Yeah, so we can enable and disable these features. So now if I go here inside the config and here we can find the Fortify here. So authentication is handled by Fortify within the JetStream and if you see here the features these features are enabled by default now if we don't want registration yeah let me comment that and if i come here and you can see here the registration url will be gone there will only be the login url let us not disable that for now and let us quickly register a one user from here now i have registered and you can see here the dashboard here now if we go here in the web.php file inside the routes so we can see here this home page slash yeah and slash dashboard over here so now let us just say auth here and whatever routes we will be building that will have let's say we will be building articles then that will be dashboard slash articles yeah so let's fix that so let us say prefix dashboard and what we will do is group function and we'll be grouping this so what we can say is route and we'll copy this and add it here so let me format it and let me remove this comment Okay, now let me also change this dashboard to only slash because everything will be pre prefixed by dashboard then we don't need to add the dashboard here yeah so since it is running from the closer so let us create a dashboard controller and let us return this view so you can see here it is returning the inertia response not the view okay so if you don't know anything about 
in our shared uh, i'll be creating a separate series where i'll be explaining you each and every feature of inertia but this is a project so i'll be thinking that you know about inertia js so i'll not be explaining each and everything but whatever comes in i'll be explaining it a little bit now let us create a controller so so i have made an alias for php artisan make controller i'll call just pa controller okay admin slash so when I do admin slash dashboard controller, then it will create dashboard controller inside the admin folder. So now if I do it like this, so if you go here inside this admin HTTP controllers and inside here, it will create the dashboard controller. Yeah. Now if I go here inside and we can, I can simply say index and I'll just return same thing that is being returned from here yeah and let me just remove this and let me import the inertia here so you can see it is imported here and instead of the closure here let me return this dashboard controller and index method here okay now if i go here in the browser and refresh the page so it should work the same way. So you can see nothing has been changed. So the JetStream is installed. Now let us also go and look in the client side. So just before that, let me also show you here in the JetStream section. So here you can see here these features are turned off. Yeah. Now if I go here in the ad, admins and profile section, so you can see your profile information, password update. So browser sessions and these accounts are enable but there is no profile upload feature now to if we go here and just uncomment this and let me go in the browser and refresh then you will see here this profile photo here now we can update our profile photo as well so we need this feature now we don't want this api and teams feature in this project so we'll just let it disable also since we have already created an admin so we don't want registration feature so we'll also disable that okay now let us go to the js folder so resources js and here inside you can see here all the components of the jet stream that is available yeah we can have this uh, so we have message we have button yeah we have input fields we have models and everything most of there are more many things that we'll be using from jet stream and the components that are not available for us through the jet stream we'll be building ourselves we'll be making a new components folder here and we'll be making that yeah, now let us go to the app.js folder now you can see here this is just requiring the bootstrap which is from this bootstrap.js and it is just loading the load as and axios and it is also importing the view and here it is loading the inertia js inertia view and laravel jetstream also provide us with the neat clean api while submitting the form so it is requiring that i'll show you when we'll be building the backend and this portal view is for the showing and hiding of the models now it is just initializing the inertia app inertia form and some of the portal view and it is just setting up the view js and here it is setting up the inertia js yeah so initial page will be the props that will be available on each and every page of our application yeah we'll, i'll be showing you when we'll be building this and also this means that whenever we uh, visit let's say slash yeah so it is taking us to the dashboard then what it will do is it will just go inside the page and dashboard so if you see here in the dashboard controller we are just returning the dashboard yeah and when we return the dashboard it will go inside the pages folder and look into the dashboard.view yeah so if you see here in the inside the js it is looking into the pages folder and inside we, we are getting here dashboard.view so it will just load this view okay and you can see here this is the app layout yeah so this app layout is coming from layouts slash app layout and if we go here in the layout slash app layout all the navigation related code is over here navigation bar code this code yeah and here if we go here at the bottom here and if we see here here is a slot and in the dashboard 
whatever we put here inside this app layout will be inserted in this slot and currently this is being added in the profile page so if you go here in the dashboard so this thing is all from this point yeah from this logo to the all the section is in this dashboard section so it is being shown here and it also includes this header section which is this dashboard okay this will be the breadcrumbs okay now this is the welcome here and component and if we see here where is it coming from so it is coming from jet jet, jet stream welcome and if we go here in the jet stream and here welcome yeah so there are all these codes so all these bottom codes are coming from this welcome component so these are all the things that come by default with jet stream so we'll be removing all these things so we don't need this welcome yeah so we'll be just removing this and here we'll say the dashboard page content and now for this to take effect we have to say npm run watch here okay after this if we go here and refresh the page now we'll see this the dashboard page content so we'll be leaving it here and in the next video we'll be first making the website so all the design related stops will be starting with that we'll complete that and then we'll come to the back end and we'll be creating apis for that yeah we'll be creating categories crowd we'll be making articles crowd yeah and we'll be showing all those on the front end and also we'll be adding the some settings stops like about us content like contact us like email phone number that all will be under the settings and we'll get all those data from there and displaying it in the front end whenever we complete the front end yeah okay that's it for today guys and in tomorrow's video we'll be looking into the front end stops so if you enjoyed this video then please don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and also hit subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this thank you for watching have a great day bye